That's all that we have. We will uh, fix our hearts, open our minds to receive what uh, Pastor Frida has for us today. Pastor Frida, it's your word. Amen. Good to hear all of your voices. And Sister Singletary, not singling anybody out, but I'm just glad to hear your voice. And um, <clears throat> we have been praying for you. And please make sure that Amen. you text us or call us if you need us. Um, we're right there on the other side of the phone. So uh, last week <laughs> was one of those weeks where we all ran uh, like in circles, but the Lord still came forth with a word. So we've been in Exodus and Exodus, uh, last week we talked about Exodus 3 and we made that our part 3. And that was the calling of Moses through the burning bush and the ways that God has spoken to each and every one of us through scenarios that just like, you know, that had to be God. That's something different. I got to check this out. I got to lean and listening ear. I got to pay attention to what's going on because God is trying to tell me something. We, we need to not dismiss things that are out of the ordinary because God can use whoever he wants to deliver his word. He can use a donkey. Uh, yes, that's, that's scripture. He can use a donkey. He can use a, a, a crow. He can use a, a, a rock. He can ca cause a rock to cry out on his behalf. And so God can use anybody. And uh, that's when Moses got his calling. Where is your uh, burning bush to tell you what is next in your life? What is your assignment? What is uh, what you've been groomed to be? He he was uh, <clears throat> born a slave, but quickly took on the persona of a of a prince. And uh, after that, then he discovered who he was in the midst of turmoil. That's who we really figure out who we are in the midst of turmoil. Then we can really see, oh, this is the real me. And so he went to the backside of the desert we talked about, and that's when he saw um, the burning bush. And when he talked to God, Moses had some problems because uh, up until then, we didn't know this, but apparently Moses had a, had a speech impediment. Uh, he was a, 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 a stutterer, and some of us may not stutter, but you have other things that, that get you that causes you to be afraid to go forth and do the things that God has called you to do. Moses was elected to be deliver, deliverer. Whenever there's a, a, a problem, when there are some people that need deliverance, God will raise up a deliverer. Isn't it something that God can take one that hasn't been completely delivered yet <laughs> and use them to deliver an entire nation? That's amazing. God is saying, why not you? Why, why not you? Well, you know, I'm always, I'm a background person and I do this and I, I really, you know, I feel more comfortable in the kitchen at the church or I feel more comfortable with a mop. I feel more comfortable behind the scenes, but God is pushing you to a higher level. Why not you? If, 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 if I called you to do a work, I will, I, I, I'm not going to set you up to fail. And that's, that's how God does it. If he calls you, he already knows what the outcome is going to be. I'm going to be with you. I'll equip you equip you. Somebody coined the phrase that where God guides, he provides. He will give you the things that is necessary that you need. I'll be with you. I'll, I'll do the things that I'll lead you. Let me lead you in the path of righteousness for, for his name's sake. Note that God didn't send Moses into an unfamiliar territory either. Uh, this is a place that Moses was there. It was years ago, but he, you know, it was a place where he knew Egypt. Moses knew Egypt. He knew the sufferings of the people. He also knew the condition of the people. Uh, he knew uh, what was those things that was causing the suffering from the in, from an inside point of view. He had been there. He had watched them. If our steps have been ordered by the Lord, everything that we go through is a learning experience that is going to be a part of our next level experience. Are you learning in the midst of your struggle? Are you learning something in the midst of your test? Like it or not, your your past is what is going to make you who you are uh, or, or, or who you are going to be in the future of things. So I want to get to Exodus 4, Exodus um, chapter 5, 
uh, part four of the Exodus, but somewhere in, it seems like I'm skipping over chapter four only because of time frames. Um, but uh, chapter four talks about the signs and the wonders that God had to give to Moses. And some of us need, we're like the children of Egypt and, and, and we're like, um, uh, uh, the, the, Oh my goodness, I slipped and lost his name there. Uh, uh, Gideon, like Gideon, we need a sign. You know, show me a sign, God. And Moses uh, was given a staff by God and God showed him the different things that he could do with the staff when trouble come. Uh, sometimes we get something, God equips us with something and we don't have a clue what that thing is gonna be used for in the future. But I say, learn your trade, learn your gift. Study your gift. Study that thing that God has already given you. So today I, I want to skip to Exodus 5 and I want to talk about making bricks without straw. Uh-huh. I said it, making bricks without straw. And so let's see, I have a um, some scripture here. Uh, I'm going to skip through some and I'm going to read it as we go. It says in verse five, verse one, I mean, chapter five, verse one, afterward, Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and said, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, let my people go so that they may hold a festival to me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh said, who is the Lord that I should obey him and let Israel go? I don't know the Lord. And I don't want to let us Israel go. This is the NIV translation, y'all. You need to read some of this in different translations. I love the King James translation. I do. I do. I do. I do. But you need to go and check out some of these other translations because we can't all understand the thither about than this is. Uh, we can't all understand the Greek and the Hebrew, but the NIV, the message translation, the voice, all of those are great translations. Um, so Pharaoh, Pharaoh tells him like, who's the Lord? I don't even know your Lord, not Karen. And then in verse, let's see, that's verse three. Then they said, the God of the Hebrews has met with us. Now let us uh, uh, take a three day journey into the wilderness to offer sacrifices to the Lord, our God. And he may, uh, or, or, or he may strike us with plagues or with the sword. But the King of Egypt said, Moses and Aaron, why are you taking the people away from their labor? Get back to your work. Then Pharaoh said, look, the people of the land are now numerous and you're stopping them from working. That same day, Pharaoh gave this order to the slave drivers and overseers in charge of the people. You are no longer going to supply the people with straw for making bricks. Let them go and gather their own straw, but require them to make the same number of bricks as before. Don't reduce the quota. They're lazy, and that is why they're crying out. Let us go and sacrifice to our God. Make the work harder for the people so that they can keep working and pay no attention to their lives. Now, you can read further into the chapter uh, at your leisure, but we're still in that book. We're still, we want to fully be delivered. I don't know anybody on this line that has been in a place of bondage and, and held captive that you don't want to be delivered. I know because you're on here. Uh, we want to be fully delivered from the things and circumstances that has enslaved us. Um, I warned you all a while back that we would probably go backtracking due to the fact that there's so much in this book of Exodus. I love it that we want to learn what we can and move forward into what we're calling our wealthy place. How many know each and every one of you ladies on here today have a wealthy place? Some of you are right in it and don't even recognize the place that you're in. So come on and go with me just for a little bit. But what happens after you hear a word from the Lord concerning your deliverance? And as you look around, you realize I'm still in the same bondage. Okay. So here in the scripture, God has sent the deliverer He's here, and yet his people were still being held by the enemy. Why did it happen like this? Do you know God can do something in a millisecond? He can do something right now, but sometimes he allows us to go through a progress and a process. Uh, and so here in the scripture, God has sent the deliverer, and yet his people were still being held by the enemy. Wouldn't it be so awesome if that, as soon as God sent the word, that everything was wonderful, everything was perfect, 
everything was marvelous. He would rub his magic ball and we would be in that place where we've always desired to be. Oh God, can he do that for me? A place where the bills are paid, the children are successful and jobs are enjoyable experiences. Our pain is gone. Our habits are destroyed and we're completely made whole. We all want that. But how many know that rarely does it happen that way? It, it's a process that we're ever going through. We get saved and then we get frustrated because we can't find uh, that we, w because we find that we still feel like doing the things that we were saved from. Hear me? Yes. God saved our souls, but our lips are still unclean. He saved our souls, but our hands still do the things that are not pleasing to him. Our souls are saved, but our feet have a mind of their own and they tend to go wherever they want to go. Not only that, but we find that after salvation, things don't always get better, but if it was never possible, things may have gotten worse. Yes, you gave your hand to the preacher. You sat up front. You confessed with your mouth. You believed with your heart and things got worse. And, and, and the older you get, it's like, okay, this should be easy sailing somewhere along the way. I'm trying to go to another level, but yet it seems that every step I take, I meet with an obstacle that leaves me with a desire to take several steps back. Um, uh, 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 and so well, we have to understand that your breakthrough, which is uh, when we started out with this series, is not back in Egypt. It's not back there, y'all. Stop going back there. But your breakthrough is ahead of you. And if you don't know that, the devil does. And he goes out of his way to block your blessings. Yes, that's his job to block your blessings, to distract you, to disillusion you, to get you going in the wrong direction. He sends things our way called strongholds. You know about strongholds. And the best way I can describe a stronghold is something that holds you strong, that strongly has got a hold of you, that thing that stays on your mind that is not of God. You know it's not of God, but it stays on your mind. It's that habit that you can't seem to break. It's the addiction that causes you to shake when you can't submit to it. It's that spirit in you that won't let you go. It's that anger that just continues to haunt you. It's the monkey that's on your back. It's that thing that got a hold of you and it just will not release itself. It's there in the morning when you wake up and it haunts you when you go to sleep. We wonder why folks that have been saved for so long, they still smoke cigarettes. They still look at porn on the internet. They still do weed. It's a stronghold and you need that thing blown up. That's what you got to do with strongholds. They got to be... <coughs> They got to be blown up. The weapons of our warfare are not a carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. In order to get rid of them, they got to be pulled down, casting down imaginations. That's how you pull down a stronghold, y'all. Nobody teaches us. They tell us to get saved. They don't tell us how to stay saved. They teach us how to uh, about a stronghold, but they don't teach us how to get rid of the stronghold. You got to cast down imaginations every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought, every thought, every, oh my God, we wake up with stinking thinking. Uh, we, every thought that exalts itself, what? Against the knowledge of God and bring it into captivity, take it captive. Um, every thought to the obedience of Christ and having in readiness to revenge all disobedience. You got to revenge disobedience with obedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Moses has come to lead the people out of Egypt and goes before Pharaoh and the king to ask for the release to go worship by holding a feast in the wilderness. Just let us go. We want to go worship the Lord. We just want to do our little thing. We want to do a little repast and, and lay on the floor and give God glory a little bit. And Moses and Aaron come to them and declare that the Lord God of Israel says, let my people go. You remember the, the Ten Commandments movie. Uh, Pharaoh asked them, who's this God? And that I should listen to what he's got to say and let, let them go. I don't know the Lord. I don't know God. And so here is the first obstacle, okay? If you're taking notes, here's your first obstacle. We're going into the enemy's camp to take back what he stole from us. Uh, and he's saying, go away. The enemy's looking at you like, I know John, I know Paul, you, I, I don't know. Go away. I don't know your God. 
he, he, he means uh, nothing to me. That's what the enemy says to you. I, your God don't mean nothing to me. I'm not impressed by your God. Your, your job could care less about your God. Hear me. Your, your, your job could care less about your God. Our father means nothing to Tangare. Uh huh. Your Jesus means nothing to cannabis, heroin, crack. Our, our Lord doesn't phase, that is not phase. Uh, our Lord doesn't phase fornication or adultery. Uh uh. It doesn't phase uh, selfishness and deceit. Uh, I don't know your Lord. So therefore, I'm not afraid of him. Uh, therefore, I'll not let the people go. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to hold on to them. They don't even know what's holding on to them, but I'm going to hold on to them and I'm not going to let them go. You see, Moses used to be one of them. He used to be one of them. He, hang, he hung out with Pharaoh and was uh, raised as his grandson. And they were not seeing the new Moses. Uh, they didn't understand that Moses had not only been on the backside of the desert tending sheep, but he was in training uh, for this very time on the backside of the desert. Anybody been on the backside of the desert? Moses was developing a relationship with God and he had been changed from the creature he was. But Pharaoh saw before him was the old Moses. Hear me. It was the old Moses. I don't care you 40 years old, but you still look like the same Moses that left here uh, when we get saved it's on the end it's an inside job uh, and when our friends see us they only see the old person they see that old person that used to hang out with them all the time the same old face the same old hands so they're not intimidated by you and they're not intimidated by your God you could talk about God all you want to throw his name in a conversation every now and then you can attend church all you want to just as long as what you don't change. If you don't change, the enemy ain't studying you. He ain't worried about you and the enemy ain't intimidated by you. Satan says that you can sing in a choir and dance with the praise dancers. Uh, go on and go to Bible study as long as you don't change. Uh, we accept the Lord as our savior and we expect the next day this miracle that my flesh doesn't want any part of sin. But I'm here to tell you that ain't nothing going to change unless you change. It's a choice to change every day. It's a choice to change, to let go of the past, to let go of the old habits, to let go of the old hurts, to let go of the old hangups. And the reason why people around you are not intimidated by your God, maybe it's because uh, uh, they can't see the power of God working in your life. They can't see what God is doing in your life. Maybe they don't see the change because listen, you still talk the same, you still cuss the same, you still do everything you used to do before you said you you were saved. Uh, uh, and so they're not impressed. They're not intimidated by your God because you ain't showing no power. Well, you know, we got all of this knowledge. We got all of this and we got no power. We got no power. And so the reason uh, uh, we keep going, baby, they just don't see it. And so I, I, I knew a lady, listen, that I worked with and she gave her life to the Lord and it was a process. It was a process. I was so excited when she got saved and she was very extreme in her sin. She was very extreme and her mouth didn't hold anything back. But one month at a time, one day at a time, sweet Jesus, there began to be a change in the way that she reacted. And one day she told um, our coworkers that she didn't want to go to the club with them anymore. Uh-huh. She didn't want to go hang out at the bar no more. She found herself in the car with her daughter listening to secular talk program that was really talking carnal and she shocked her daughter in turning it off because she found that she didn't want to listen to that kind of stuff anymore because there was a change that happened on the inside of her. Uh, we need to shock somebody that's been in our lives for years. It's like, oh, that's not the same person that I knew back then. She decided she wanted to fill her ears with things that were going to build her up and not tear her down. I remember I used to watch a lot of, St I mean, read a lot of Stephen King books and John Saul books. And I don't know if you, you know, any of those authors, but, but they were very, like, they were horrors. They were, they were, they were, um, violent. They were, uh, they were good reading, I thought. And then one day I said, you know what, as much time as I spend reading these books, I could be reading something edifying. I could be reading my Bible because I was reading my Bible, but I was filling the rest of my thoughts with this other stuff, this, uh, these other movies, these other books that completely took me off, off, off course. 
And so I decided, uh, as she decided to start building myself up with more positive things, she had to change. And when that became evident to those around her, that her testimony was this, they began to see that this God had to be real if she could change. Uh huh. Have you ever seen somebody that's like, no, 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 that's God. That is God. God then did something in their life uh, because I can see the change. They began to see that it was real. Even her spouse watched her change. And after quite a while of watching this metamorphosis, he decided to join in her in church on a Sunday morning. And as far as I know, she, you know, she's not perfect now. She's never been perfect and neither has any of us ladies that is on this line today. But every day she's changing and people are beginning to take what she says seriously now. Now, don't just tell me Jesus loves me. Show me Jesus loves me. Show me that he's able. Show me that he's able to perform miracles. Show me by, by, by you being the miracle. Pharaoh just didn't know yet the change in Moses and what God had served. He, the, the God he served was capable of. And when you say, Satan, I rebuke you, how does the devil respond? How, how does it? Because we've said it. We've, we've been taught. Satan, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. How does he respond? Does he tremble and flee? Or does he say, oh, it's just you? <laughs> and laugh out loud. The Bible says that if we would submit ourselves to God, that we can resist the devil. You got to resist the devil and that he shall flee. The Bible says that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in the earth and things under the earth and that every tongue shall confess that Jesus is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. Moses then gave Pharaoh a warning that if it doesn't let it go, if you, if you don't let my people go, that our God God is going to send pestilence and the king is disturbed about now that they would even have nerve enough to ask for people to be released. Now he's mad. The enemy's mad because they, they're, they're being used for his, his good to, to edify his kingdom that was here on earth. And Pharaoh looked around and again, he observed how much these people began to multiply. Remember, the more that they were afflicted, the more they multiplied. Have you multiplied since you've been going through your, your circumstances? Have you gotten stronger or have you gotten weaker? Have you been broken or have you been made something Kind of like Job, gold, pure gold. Uh, uh, they just kept multiplying. And y'all might know my little characters. They're like baby's kids. They didn't die. They multiply. And again, I say that the reason that so many of us are under attack is because Satan has looked into your future. He's looked dead into your future and he knows what you're capable of. And he wants to kill you or even handicap, handicap you. You've been through some things because Satan knows what you are capable of. And if he can get you to believe, if he can get you Hear me, if he can get you to believe you are not who God says you are, then he's won the victory. For if you ever realize you're, you're in Christ, you won't walk around saying, woe is me. You'll stop that uh, uh, acting like you're so helpless. I've been in those moments. I'm telling you, but God says, snap out of it, child. You are a child of the king. You are blessed and highly favored. You are above and not beneath. You are, you, 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 you are blessed in a city. You're blessed in the field. Wherever you go, I got you. I got you. We're, we're more than conquerors. We are winners without even throwing a punch, ladies. We're winners. You don't even have to throw a punch. You're already a winner. If you remember the scripture, it said, again, the more that they were afflicted, the more that they grew. Every time we come out of a battle, we should be stronger. I, I don't cry over the same things that I used to fall out about before. I'm telling you, and I've gone through some things that was worthy of tears, but I don't fall out like I used to. Uh-uh. I, 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 David fought a giant and won, and so he didn't get intimidated every time he saw another giant. It was another giant. I'm not intimidated by that giant. And some of the things you went through probably would have killed somebody else. And I know that's a fact. Uh, but you survived. And you're on here because you survived. You came out on the other side. You may be a little bit shaken. Yes. But you're standing. You're standing. You may be a little bit uh, uh, anxious. And you may be a little bit nervous about it all. But you made it. So here's what uh, Pharaoh decided to do. He told his officers, you go tell the Israelites that we're not letting them go to worship in the desert. So, so since they think they have time to do all of that, uh huh. Uh, how about we tell them to get back to work? But now we're not going to supply them with any straw to make the bricks to help build our city. 
They're going to have to get their own straw and still get those bricks done just as fast as they've been producing them before. Listen, straw was used with clay to hold it together and then they were set in the sun to dry. Have you ever been in a situation, women of God, uh, in which you had to make bricks without straw and you got to do it in a hurry? Uh huh. Have you ever been overwhelmed with your circumstances and you can't get your hands on that key ingredient that would help hold it together. Uh -huh. Your bills were becoming overwhelming, but you don't got a job. Have you ever tried to hold a marriage together when there is no love? Have you ever felt like you were losing your mind and you had no peace? I don't know how to get a hold of peace. I don't know how to steal these thoughts of mine. Have you ever tried to pray and you didn't have a relationship with Jesus? Uh -huh. Jesus is the straw that you have been looking for that holds everything together. My God, when you, when you make a meatloaf, you use an egg uh, to hold all the ingredients together. Uh, it, it, it's good. It's going to take Jesus to hold everything together, to hold your sanity together. When you make macaroni and cheese, my mom taught me to put the egg in. You put everything else got to go in first and you taste it uh, and season it first. Then you put the egg in that keeps everything together. It's going to take Jesus, um, after having done all that you can do, you got to stand. It's going to take Jesus to hold your marriage and your family together. No banker can do what Jesus can do to hold your finances together. If you feel like your world is falling apart, you got to start looking for Jesus. Uh, the Israelites had to run quickly searching for bits and pieces of straw and rubble so they could produce these these bricks. And when they weren't moving fast enough, the taskmasters began to beat the officers of the people. And in turn, they would cry out to Moses and Aaron. And, and then Moses cried to the Lord. And, and some of you are on the verge of the deliverance, but you're frustrated because everything seems to be falling apart. But you don't know you're right on the edge of your breakthrough. You are right at the place where God has you and he's going to take you over the finish line. Uh, I'm here to encourage you this morning, this afternoon. Don't give up. I'm talking to somebody on this line. Don't give up. It's darkest just before the day. Don't give up. We serve Jehovah, y'all. Uh, Jehovah, that is, I am your covenant God. And I have promise to bring you into a land that you did not work for. I'll, I'll give you houses that you won't have to build. I, I, that's what my God says. But nobody wants to hear about when you're going through. Yeah, when you're going through, it's like, okay, I'll listen to you for a minute. But, uh, you know, I've been through. I've been through. I've been in the front of through, in the middle of through. I've been on the end of through. And, 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 you know, have you ever got your back against the wall, y'all? We'll talk about that later when we cross the Red Sea. But but, but when I've been my back against the wall and I just felt like giving up, I know my friends would try to comfort me. And and and, 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 and they would give me all the scriptures that I normally would have given them. Uh -huh. and, 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 uh, but I, I, I knew the Lord and I knew the word. In my worst scenario, and you know it too, you go to Bible study, you've been in Sunday school, you read your scripture. They were, they were telling me anything that I didn't already know, but knowing what God can do did not stop me from feeling the pain and anxiety that I felt in my heart. I'm just trying to be honest here. I knew in the end that God could work it out, but that didn't change my heart situation. I found myself getting angry at the people that would throw these scriptures at me um, and the, the continue, continuous bannering. Because when people get nervous, they just keep on talking. They just Sometimes you just need somebody to listen every now and then. The children of Israel knew what God's plan was for them, but they were hurting. Listen, now, capital N-O-W, I'm hurting now. Anybody hurting right now? Okay, deliverance is tomorrow, but how do I get through this now? Capital N-O-W. People in church can be so fake, y'all. You're going to find for me if you haven't already. I'm not fake. I tell you how I feel, what I'm going through, and how I got to the next level because there's somebody behind me that's going to go through the same thing and needs to understand we do hurt. We do hurt. And even though we know God's plan for us, we do hurt sometimes. Sometimes church people act like everything is just so perfect. But I'm here to tell you that God's people do hurt. They're human, but we will 
inherit the promise. I hurt, but I'm going to inherit the promise. Uh, we will be delivered. Uh, we shall not die, but we shall live and declare the works of the Lord. Uh, we are troubled on every side, and yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. I'm just here to tell somebody, if the enemy tells you to make bricks without straw, you take it to God in prayer, and he will supply your needs as 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 our, our evangelist Jalen was saying, he'll supply our needs according to his riches and glory. Bless God for you ladies. Thank you for being on the line. Thank you for hearing. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No power. Hallelujah. No power. Yes. Yes. Stand. Stand. Mm. Don't give up. Don't give up. <laughs> thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Hallelujah, thank Lord you. Jesus. Yes. Thank you. People love thank you. Ask again if there are any other names for the uh, prayer calls before Pastor Frida comes with our closing prayer and praying over uh, our names that are on the prayer list. I will call out the ones that I have. Uh, Sister Singletary, uh, girlfriend of mine, uh, Yvonne Carter, my cousin Lucille Bradley, another girlfriend of mine, Celeste Hughes. Uh, I was given Joyce Carney. Bernie Stone, uh, the Kimball family, and the family of Annie Brown. I believe I got that correctly. Uh, did I miss anything? Is that you, uh, all? You said. Cor correct. That's Dr. Joyce Iron, I R O N S. Oh, Iron. Iron. Okay, Joyce. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I yes, thought it was Carney. Oh, okay. Yes. I, 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 okay. So, I, oh, yeah. my friend Beth. Sister Jerlyn, you said some names really quickly in the beginning. Yvonne. Okay, Yvonne Carter. Okay. All right, and my cousin Lucille Bradley. Lucille and Bradley. Uh -huh. Yeah, Lucille Bradley and another girlfriend, uh, um, Evelette Hughes, E-V-E-L-E-T Hughes. Okay, that's what I needed. Bible says that if we are willing and obedient, we shall eat of the good of the land. We shall eat of the fat of the land. So, so you're willing and you're doing what you know to do. You're going to eat of the fat of the land. And we declare that over your life right now in Jesus matchless name. I am doing much better with your prayers. I am, uh, I knew it was coming. It's just taking the time, uh, to heal because we're women. We're just used to being able to be in charge of, of us. And yes. uh, when that's taken yes. away from you, you kind of, I, I went through something mentally, emotionally in that whole process because I couldn't. But um, th for those of you who don't know, these messages on Tuesday, I also put them on YouTube. They're on video on YouTube and Frida Thorpe and on Facebook. So you'll be able to see Sunday's messages as well as uh, our Tuesday Bible studies. 
um, that I have online. So let let us let us go to the throne, uh, Lord God. We again we give you glory. We give you. We applaud you, O oh God. We 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 lift you up, Lord God, and we know that you are the God of all. You are mercy. You're a God of mercy, and you're a God of grace. You're a God of healing, Lord God. You're a God of distress. You are a God that comes. You are our help right now. I thank you for being our help in the time of trouble. That Lord God, that we thought we was going to die. We thought we was going to give up. We thought we was going to pass out. But for some reason, we're still here and we're still standing. So thank you, Lord, for all of that, Lord God. We ask, Lord God, these names, we lay them at your throne and we just thank you even in advance for the healing of these ladies uh, um, that are on the list and, and any gentlemen that are also involved, oh God. And we, we right now, we pray, Lord God, for comfort, for all the things that is necessary when you lose a spouse after so many years. I pray for Sister Singletary, Lord God, that you feel all those voided places, that you feel it, Lord God, whether it's in her heart, whether it's in her mind, whether it's in her bank account, whether it's in her, uh, her home, Lord God, we ask that you, you fill her life with you, fill her life with love, God. Send what she needs when she needs it, Lord God, in Jesus' name name. We pray for Haiti, oh God, who lost all the people uh, in the earthquake, oh God, and those that are just trying to find a place to eat and a place to sleep, Lord God. We ask, Lord God, that you bless uh, Haiti, Lord God, our brothers and our sisters over there, and even in Afghanistan, Lord God, you know that all the political disruption and all of those things, and we do know that some of these things are biblical, but these things must come to pass for the beginning of the end days to happen. But Lord God, we ask, Lord God, that you uh, give us peace wherever you allow us to have peace, Lord God, that you cause, Lord God, the, that our sons and daughters, our, our family members, that may be over fighting the fight, Lord God, fighting the good fight that you, we plead the blood over their lives, God, even right now in the name of Jesus. We pray for Dr. Joyce Irons, Lord God, and Sister Boney, Bernie or Brother Bernie Stone, uh, what, you know their, their, their gender, Lord God. And uh, I, I add, Lord God, my nephew Cameron Kemp, Lord God, as he is pleading for prayer and he doesn't even know what he needs from you. He has no idea even really the depth of you, oh God. So I'm asking for his salvation. Lord, I'm asking for his salvation and he does need to be delivered. So Lord God, out of his own mouth, he said, please pray for me and Frida. So pray, we pray for Cameron, Lord God. We pray for the Kimball family, Lord God. Such a great loss. There's nothing like a mom, Lord God. We ask that you pray, that you uh, comfort them, Lord. You are the God of all comfort. You are the balm of Gilead. You're able to rub some things where we're feeling pain and loss, Lord God. We uh, the And Miss Annie Brown's uh, family, Lord God, we pray for them, Lord Jesus. There's a lot of healing of the heart that has to go forth in these days that we for losing people left and right. We pray Pray for Sister Jerlyn's friends, uh, Sister Lucille Bratley, and we call out Yvonne Carter, and we call out Ivelet Hughes, Lord God, and, and, and also Betty Carney, God. We just lay their names right there at the altar, Lord God, as we hold on to the altar ourselves, and we ask that you do with it what you want to do with it, that let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, O oh God. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, Lord God. Let your will be done in these names, in these homes, in these households, and all the ladies and even gentlemen that may be on the line, O oh God. God, I ask that you bless them, God, that you give them what they stand in need of. Oh, God, keep us, keep us, keep us, and we shall be kept, Lord God. Watch over us night and day, Lord God, even as until we see each other again, Lord God, uh, we ask that you just be uh, who we need you to be in these times of trouble. God, we pray these things and ask them uh, with the guarantee of your name, Jesus Christ, the Savior, Lord God, in Jesus' name we pray. If you agree with me, ladies, you can shout and holler out, amen. 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 amen.